Remain seated and join me on our theme chorus, Sound the Battle Cry. Rose and soldiers rally round the banner, ready, steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout aloud, Hosanna, Christ is captain of our mighty throne. Amen. Well, we're so glad to have you here with us today. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer and ask God to bless in the service. Dear Lord, we're grateful to be here in the house of God today. Thank you for each of these that have gathered. Father, we pray for your blessing to be bestowed upon uh, this congregation today. Thank you for the early service and for Sunday school. And now, Father, we're trusting that you'll bless in this service today. And Father, I uh, pray that you'll just, uh, if there's someone here that needs Christ as their Savior, help them to see their need of salvation. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
faithful God. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing a great chorus. His name is wonderful. Number 42. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, he is the mighty king, master of everything. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He's a great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God, his name. Bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, Jesus, my I'd like you to greet those around you while the instrument plays. Page 138 in your hymnal, 138. Join us in singing One Day. Oh, one day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming. Oh, glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him die on a tree, suffering anguish, despised and rejected, 
Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. Living He loved me, dying He saved me. Buried and carried, my sins far away. Rising He justified. Ever, one day He's coming. Oh, glorious day. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he has conquered. Now is ascended my Lord evermore. Living he loved me, dying he saved me. My sins far away, arising he justified forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. Oh, one day the trumpet will sound for his coming. One day the skies with glory will shine. Wonderful day. My beloved one's bringing glorious Savior, this Jesus is mine. Living he loved me, dying he saved me. My sins far away, arising he justified forever. One day he's coming. Today, I have one, uh, just one letter that came from our missionaries with beams, and beam stands for Bible Education Missionary Service, and uh, they are thanking the Lord for the folks that have helped us uh, send out Bibles. They send out Bibles to missionaries. Missionaries will take those Bibles and distribute them uh, in the countries where they're at, but they also need more missionaries to help spread the news about the beams and uh, to encourage people to help participate in helping to uh, uh, send those Bibles out as we do. And so every month they're sending out Bibles. I, they're looking at Zam, uh, Zambia and they're going to be sending 4,000 Bibles to them. But these are hard-covered Bibles that they're sending and so they should last for a long time. But we have a part in that every single month. We help to support them through our missions giving. Let's bow our heads, ask God to bless and our offering today. Dear Lord, we pray that you would help us in our giving here at Liberty Baptist Church. I pray, Father, that you would bless our people as they give. Father, I pray that they would see the blessings as a result of their faithfulness in giving. Dear Lord, I pray that you would help us to be able to meet the needs of our missionaries that are around the world. We have missionaries in all the countries of the world. Dear Lord, the gospel is being spread even today and souls will be saved as a result of uh, the, the gospel being preached. and fa Now, Father, we pray that you would bless in our offering today that we might continue to uh, maintain this lighthouse here in Sarasota, reaching the world with the gospel. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Take your Bible, turn with me to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6. He's preaching a series of six messages concerning laying up treasures in heaven. Our theme for our missions conference this year is laying up treasures in heaven. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 24, I would like to read with you today. If you can stand with me, if you found your place there, then we'll read together. Verses 19 through 24. If you have a red letter edition of the Bible, how many have a red letter edition of the Bible? The red letters, that tells us, that's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is speaking these words. This is part of what is called the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, begins in chapter 5, and here in chapter 6 and chapter 7, Jesus is laying down, preaching this message to the people. And beginning with verse 19, the Bible says, and Jesus himself said, lay not up for your Sells treasures upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt where thieves do not break through nor steal for where your treasure is there will your heart be also the light of the body is the eye if therefore thine eye be single thy whole body shall be full of light but if thy eye be evil thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. We need to be laying up treasures in heaven. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would bless the preaching of the word of God. These are the very words of Christ. you these words have been preserved for us, and we know this is your word. And Father, I pray that you would help us to follow the truth that you've taught to us here, to lay up treasures in heaven and not to lay up treasure just on this earth. And dear Lord, I pray that you would help us to have the right mindset, be looking forward to heaven, be looking forward to eternity, looking past this life, looking forward to those things, Father, that you have for us. Now, Father, I pray that there's one here today that doesn't know Christ as their Savior, that you would show them, Father, their need of salvation today. May they come to know Christ. Father, may they know what uh, salvation is all about. Now, Father, I pray that you will help us as Christians to uh, be encouraged in our hearts, Father, to live victorious lives. Help us to know that, Father, you're the one that gives us joy. You're the one that gives us peace. Father, you're the one that gives us uh, that enjoyment in life and father I pray that that each one here would experience that father they would know it from the love of God now father bless in the preaching of the word I pray in Jesus name amen you may be seated there was a man that went to a fortune teller of course we teach against going to fortune tellers uh, if a person is a genuine fortune teller then they have uh, an unclean spirit in them, a demon in them. That's what the Bible uh, teaches us. And so a person who uh, would go to that person, you would uh, actually, uh, you would defile yourself if you do that. If you go to, if you go to any uh, fortune tellers or people that uh, do horoscopes and those things, I mean, as Christians, we're not to have any part in those things. But people go to those. It's amazing. How people go to those right here in Sarasota. I was driving down 41 the other day. I saw a number of those places right down there in 41. And so, but we're not supposed to go to those places. Now, a man went to one, and uh, the fortune teller, he said, what do, you, what do you think about my future? And the fortune teller told him, she said, well, she said, you're going to be poor and unhappy until you're 30 years old. He said, well, he said, uh, what then? And then he was expecting her to say something else, and this is what she said. She said, then you'll get used to it. That's what she said. <laughs> this is interesting. A story that came from New Zealand, a story in New Zealand. Uh, they, there was an advertisement, and I guess it was in the magazines and local papers and so forth, and there was uh, someone advertising that they could cut your bills in half. They said it was tested and it was proved and it was guaranteed that if you would subscribe to them, you would send them so much money, they would cut your bills in half. They would cut your bills in half. That's what they were saying. And the authorities, they decided they're going to check into this. They said, well, this doesn't sound good, you know. I mean, this sounds like they're trying to uh, pull something on people. And so they checked into it. And what they found was 
they found that this, uh, these people that were doing this said they could cut your bills in half. What they were doing was sending people some cheap scissors. That's, what they, that's exactly what they were doing. They said they'd cut your bills in half, and that's what they were doing. They were, they were tricking people into sending them money. We're not to be laying up treasures on this earth. We're to be laying up treasures in heaven. Now, that's going to be the theme of our missions conference in November. We're looking at that. I want, to, I want to concentrate on this theme. Christ wants us to center our lives around Him. He wants us to uh, look for the permanent, eternal, heavenly things. That's where He wants us to look, rather than just the things in this world. Sometimes we, we're so burdened down, and we're so uh, burdened down with the cares of this life and with the things of this world, that that's all we concentrate on. But the Lord wants us to look forward to heaven. He wants us to look forward to eternal things. And so that's what uh, this passage is talking about. Jesus here is preaching to the people, and this is what he's saying. We need to be laying up treasures in heaven. He gives us some reasons for laying up treasures in heaven. Number one, because of the warning against laying up earthly treasures. Number one, because of the warning. Jesus gives a warning against laying up earthly treasures. Look at verses 19 and 20 here of Matthew chapter 6. Jesus said this, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. So Jesus is warning about laying up treasures on, uh, on this earth. He says we need to be laying up treasures in heaven rather than on this earth. Because, my friend, you've probably heard this saying, uh, what we keep for ourselves... We lose, but what we give to the Lord, we will keep for all eternity. We've all heard that expression, and that's what he's talking about here. In Luke chapter 12, verses 15 and 20, the Bible says, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possesseth, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. Jesus wants us to look past this life. He wants us to look to eternity. My friend, I, sometimes the only joy we have is by looking to heaven, amen? Looking past this life, looking to, through the difficulties of this life. How can we lay treasures up in heaven? We lay treasures up in heaven by giving our time, by giving our uh, talents to the Lord, and then by giving our resources to the Lord, and our tithes, our offerings to the Lord. I mean, we're laying up treasures in heaven we give to missions we're promoting missions and my friend we're laying up treasures in heaven i i believe when we give to missions reaching people with the gospel of the lord jesus christ we're going to give get even a greater uh, reward there in heaven but we need to do that all of us working together laying up treasure in heaven by giving our time by giving our talents by giving our treasures unto the lord then my friend we're laying up treasures in heaven some people they don't get this i I had an experience many years ago uh, here at Liberty Baptist. Actually, we were meeting. It was before we even moved into this building. It was at uh, the DAV Hall over there on Fruitville Road. It's now the Law Center over there. But I had a man in the church, a family in the church, and they were faithful workers here at the church, serving the Lord and uh, teaching Sunday school, teaching junior church, going out soul winning. One day I was out soul winning with this man. We're out just knocking on doors, doing it the old-fashioned way and uh, giving people the gospel and and this guy uh, started talking with me he's just a just a faithful leader in our church and and as we're talking he said you know i wish people would give more he said we're getting ready to build that new building he said it's going to cost a lot of money to build that new building and it was i mean to build this building this building wasn't built we had bought the property but we hadn't built this building so it's going to cost a lot i hope the people will start giving towards that i said well that's what we're out here, winning people to the Lord, and the Lord will grow the church, and we'll be able to do that by the glory of God, and, and uh, by the grace of God, we'll be able to do that. He said, well, he said, me and my family, we're doing our part, we're giving our time, and we're giving our talents. And I, I said, well, I said, we all need to give our time, our talents, and our, and our uh, resources, our tithes to the Lord. He said, well, I don't tithe. I said, what? <laughs> I almost fell over. I mean, here's one of the leaders in our church, and, and he wasn't tithing, and, and he's talking about it. And I just, I, I, we were out soul winning together, and I'm, I'm, I, I was just flabbergasted that he would say that. And 
I said, you mean you don't tithe? He said, well, no. He said, we give. He said, our family, we're giving our time and we're giving our talents to the Lord. He said, we're teaching Sunday school, we're singing, we're doing all these things. He said, the way I see it is some people give their, uh, their time and some people give their talents and then some people give their tithes to the Lord. And I said, well, where do you find that in the Bible? I said, that's not in the Bible. And he said, well, that's the way I think about it. I said, well, that's not the way the Bible says. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we all are to give our time, our talents, and our treasures. All of us working together, doing all of that. That's what a church is. All of us working together to do that. And he, I'll tell you what, I talked with that guy, and, and I couldn't convince him. You know, it didn't matter what I said. <laughs> I mean, he, was, he had his mindset. And, and I just, I mean, that made me sick. I, I'll be just honest with you. I was just so sick. Here was a leader in our church, and that's the way he was talking. And I'm thinking, wow. Man, I wonder how many other people think about this. I preach my heart out, preaching, teaching the truth. And if you read the Word of God, I don't know how you can miss that. But that's the way, I, I mean, I could not convince that guy otherwise. And, uh, and I just won't go into some of the other things that he said about that, but I was just flabbergasted about it. Nonetheless, let me tell you the rest of the story. It's a sad story. It's a very sad story. What happened to that guy? He had a business, had a very good business, and uh, he lost his business. He lost that business. It wasn't, you know, I thought to myself, it's no wonder he lost his business. But he didn't just lose his business. Then he lost all of his children. He had a number of children, lost all of his children. They all went out into the world. Uh, every so often, I'll see one of the children around. Uh, they're grown up, uh, adults now. But he lost his children. His wife left him. <laughs> his wife even left him. But you know what? Then a, a few years ago, this same guy was sent to prison. He was sent to prison for something. I didn't want to talk about it. But two years ago, he died in prison. You say, well, that's a terrible story. I'm just telling you, folks, I think we need to make sure that we have things right with the Lord. Amen. <laughs> make sure that we're in a line, uh, lined up with the Word of God. Make sure that we're laying up treasure in heaven. Make sure that we're doing what God's Word has said. Now, just because you might think of something, you, we need... Uh, the Bible's our book, amen? We follow the Word of God. Not what you, just what you think or what, uh, what you believe, but what does the Bible have to say? We need to be laying up treasure in heaven. The, that's what the Bible says. Because God has given us a warning here about laying up earthly treasures. There's a story a number of years ago, and I, I, I said this in the early service, and some of the folks remembered this story. It was, an out, it was just the strangest story. It was a strange story. It was on the news, and, uh, and uh, there was a guy out west, and this guy died. And when he died, he left instructions how he wanted to be buried. He wanted to be buried in his red convertible Cadillac. Some of you are saying, you're, you know what I'm... I mean, this was in the news. He want, that's how he wanted to be buried. But not just buried in that thing. At his funeral, he wanted to be sitting in the driver's seat and have his hands attached to the steering wheel, it, 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 really. And not only that, but he had a suit all picked out, and he had a little top hat he was going to wear, and he wanted to put a cigar in his mouth, and uh, no kidding. And uh, then, he, on the speedometer, he wanted them to put on there 80 miles an hour. So like he's sitting in that seat with a cigar in his mouth, a top hat on, sitting in there like he's going to drive away or something. And then they dug a big hole. They dug a big hole and they lifted that whole car and they put it all in there. Really? I, I, he, he thought somehow he's going to take it with him. I, I got news for you. He didn't take it with him. Amen? It's left behind. It's buried in the ground. They said that someone said this. Someone said, wow, uh, what a way to live. You know what? Listen, that guy was dead. He wasn't alive. He didn't take any of that with him, amen? None of that was taken with him. All of it was left behind, every bit of it. The Bible tells us we're to lay up treasures in heaven. We need to lay up treasures in heaven, number one, because of the warning against laying up earthly treasures that Christ gives to us. Number two, because of the folly of laying up earthly treasures. Look what Jesus said in verse 19 again. Jesus said this, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Jesus said it's a folly or foolishness to lay up treasures just on this earth. 
He's not saying that we can't have things on this earth. He says it's a folly, it's foolish just for us to be laying up things on this earth. And he gives some reasons here in verse number 19. First of all, because they are so uncertain. The things in this world are so uncertain. No one here can guarantee that you'll even be around tomorrow. The things in this world are uncertain. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19. Again, he says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Listen, malls can, uh, malls will take it, and rust will take it, and thieves will take it. Every day we see where the thieves are taking things. You don't know about those things. I mean, uh, they're uncertain. The things of this world are uncertain. Thousands of people lost everything they have during the Great Depression in 1929 through 1933. Only four years. I mean, the food lines, you see it. You see it over and over again. Uh, uh, what happened during that Great Depression here in America? You wouldn't think that something like that would happen, but it happened here. People were in food lines. People lost everything they had during that time. And my friend, you know what? It could happen again. Amen? It could happen. It could happen. Remember a few years ago with that recession, right here at Liberty Baptist Church, we had 27 families, 27 people without work right here. Some of you folks, you changed jobs. Some of you started reinvented yourself uh, during that time. And uh, I mean, the offerings went way down because people didn't have work. There wasn't any money. It was a terrible time. My friend, that could happen again. Amen? I, we don't know. I mean, the, the, the stock market crash, all those things. I mean, those things that we don't... It, there's an uncertainty about these things. So if we lay our treasures up on this earth, and that's what Jesus is saying. We need to be laying up treasure in heaven. There's a certainty about that. Amen? We know where that's going. We know what's going to happen to that. I think of my, my father. My father worked for Coger Executive Properties before he retired. And Coger Executive Properties is a company was on the listed on the New York Stock Exchange. It's a big company. My father's way up in that company. And he was building these executive centers all across America. Built, it, built one down in Miami. Built one in St. Pete. Built one in Tampa. Built one in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, uh, all over the country. He's building these things. Multi-million dollar executive centers for huge corporations. My father's building these places all across the country. Now these people were giving my father uh, stock in the company. They were giving him stock. They, every time they give him a bonus, they give him stock. They give him stock. And uh, so he's getting stock. And this company is a big company, Coger Executive Properties, on the New York Stock Exchange. They're giving him all of these stocks. I mean, he had a crate full of these stocks. My father got, just before my father got ready to retire, he's going to retire and go into the ministry to preach. And he pastored a couple churches up in Pennsylvania. And, uh, but just before, you know what happened? That company filed chapter 11, and all of those stocks became worthless. My father had a whole trunk full of stocks, and they were worthless. The trunk was worth more than the stocks. My father died. They, they had that stock. My father, my father went home to heaven. Some of you know that he went home to heaven. You know, my mother kept those stocks. She had those. My mother went home to heaven. I think my, my sister Missy may have my sister Missy, I think up there. And Deanna, she's got that trunk full of worthless stock. Do you know what? That's what he's talking about here. The things of this life are uncertain, amen? But God took care of my parents. Let me say, God took care of my mother. God took care of my father. Listen, that's what we trusted, amen? And my mother said over and over again, God's taking care of me. God's taking care. And God took care of her right till she went home to heaven. Listen, God take care of us. We can't count upon this world to take care of us. We can count on God to take care of us. And God will take care of us. God is taking care of you. Amen. God's always taking care of you. And God will continue to take care of you. God's taking care of me and my family all of these years. And I just trust in Him that He's going to continue to do so and, until He comes back, until my life is over. Because of the folly of sin. Jesus said it's a folly to lay up earthly treasures because, my friend, they can be gone tomorrow. First of all, He said they're uncertain. Secondly, He says they're temporary. Luke chapter 12 and verse 20, the Bible says, but God said, listen to this, but God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall, shall those things be which thou hast provided? Then in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 7 and 8, For we brought nothing into this world, it is certain, we can carry nothing out, and having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. 
Listen, when death comes, we lose it all. Amen? We leave everything behind. You're not going to take any of it with you. All of it's going to be left behind. Only what's done for Christ will last. My friend, when you breathe your last breath, only what you've done for Christ will count. Amen? For all eternity. Only then. Only then. All those things we've done for missions. Those things we've done for Christ. They're temporary. These things are temporary. So he said, don't lay up your treasures on this earth. These things are temporary. We need to be laying up treasures in heaven, which are eternal. Amen? We need to lay those up. First of all, they're temporary. They're uncertain, but then they're unsatisfying. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, and two verses there, Solomon, he was a guy that had everything in this world. And he understood that all, he kept saying, all things, if you read the book of Ecclesiastes over and over again, he says, all things are vanity. All things are vanity. You know what? He had everything in this world. And then he said, you know what? The things of this world is just vanity. They're nothing. <laughs> they pass away. In verse 24 of Ecclesiastes chapter 2, there is nothing better for a man than he, that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw. That it was from the hand of God. God gives us all things. It wasn't for the Lord. We wouldn't have anything. Verse 26. For God giveth to man that is good in his sight. Wisdom and knowledge and joy. God gives that to us. But to the sinner he giveth travail. In other words trouble. To, to gather and to heap up. That he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. God is the one that gives us joy. God is the one that uh, will satisfy our souls. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 10. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This, also, this is also vanity. So these things are vanity. These things will pass away. Uh, listen, we need to be satisfied with what Christ has given to us. Christ is the only one that can satisfy us. If you want to be satisfied, my friend, things of this world are not going to satisfy you. Only Christ is going to satisfy you. These things will pass away. These things, you go out and you get a new car, you're satisfied for a little bit. But you know what? The car gets old, amen? You're no longer satisfied with it. Well, it doesn't matter. It's like the kids at Christmas time. You give them their presents, they open all the presents up, they're excited about it, more presents, and they get all these presents, and they go and play with the boxes. You know what? They're not satisfied. Those things don't satisfy them anymore. Only Christ is going to satisfy us. Only Christ will satisfy us. You want to be happy? You want to have joy? Let Christ give you that joy. Let Christ satisfy you. He can satisfy you. He will give you that joy. Nothing else will satisfy. And He can and He will. I had two families move to uh, come here to Sarasota when I was starting this church out there. Uh, they were coming to the DAV hall there on Fruitville Road which is now the law center there. And uh, these families were wealthy families. They both owned Christmas tree farms in Michigan. And they would come down here and sell their Christmas trees, and they, would, they made a lot selling those Christmas trees. They made a lot selling Christmas trees. And they would come year after year after year selling Christmas trees here in Sarasota. They came down here, and they came to our church, and they said, you know, uh, we think we're going to move down here. We think we're going to move here. We're going to sell out up there in Michigan. We like it down here. And we're going to, we're going to live here. And I said, that's wonderful. And, uh, and uh, we'll be excited for you about that. So they sold the Christmas tree farms up there in Michigan. And they moved down here to Sarasota. When they moved here to Sarasota, they, uh, they decided they wanted to invest in a business. There was a, a garden center up on Old 301. There's a big garden center up there. And used, I used to pass by that garden center. It was a huge landscaping garden center up there they bought that i don't know what they paid for it they paid a lot of money for that but they had a lot of money they, they were i mean they had over a million dollars those guys were rich because they had that uh, the, you know they sold those christmas tree farms up there were huge they knew how to do that business so they moved down here and they're going to do the garden center they thought that they could do the garden center because they had raised christmas trees they thought that they could do that and so they came down here and did that they were coming to the church there they were working themselves silly i mean they were working you know, these two families are working themselves day and night, working at that, uh, that garden center there. And they were putting their money into that place. Uh, they were losing money like crazy because you know how, you know how the plants are and so forth. You, gotta know how to, you, you have to know about those plants. They knew about Christmas trees up there in Michigan, but they didn't know about plants down here in Florida. <laughs> they didn't know about it at all. They were, they, I mean, they were losing their money. And fact is, 
to make a long story short, they lost it. They lost that garden center out there. They lost all their money. <laughs> now, in the meantime, we were selling church bonds to, to build this building right here. We were selling first mortgage church bonds, 10% interest, mortgage on the property. And uh, so we were selling these, these people before they lost all their money. They bought a whole bunch of church bonds. They bought a whole bunch of them. And uh, when uh, they lost that business up there, the only money they had left was the money they had invested in the church. <laughs> they didn't have any money left over. Only the money that they had invested in church. In fact, let me tell you how bad it was. Those, two of those men actually went down and got jobs working at Williams Disposal Company, the, the garbage trucks. They were, they were working on the garbage trucks because they needed money. They had lost all their money. And uh, they said, we don't know what we're going to do, Pastor. We're working. We can make this money uh, working for Williams Disposal Company. But they said, we don't want to do this. We just, we're just doing this just to keep our head above water because we lost everything, lost all their money. And uh, I said, well, brothers, I said, you know, you bought these church bonds and we could take these church bonds that you bought and we could sell them to somebody else. And then you could get your money. You could get your money back and that way you'd have some money that you could go ahead and live. And they said, Let's, would you mind doing that? I said, I, no, I wouldn't mind doing that. And we'll pray about that. And so we prayed about it. We sold all the church bonds, all the church bonds that they bought. We resold those to other people who wouldn't want those bonds today, even today, you know, 10% uh, mortgage on the property. I mean, they were worth, uh, I mean, they, they were very valuable. Nonetheless, we sold them just like that. And uh, they took the money and they said they thanked us and praised the Lord. They gave some of they gave up money back to the church as a result of that. But then they said, you know what? We're going to go back to Michigan. We're going to do what we know we can do. <laughs> we're going to go back up there. We're going we're to start over again. And we're going to start a Christmas tree farms up there. We know that business. And we're going to go back and do that. And I said, well, may the Lord bless you to do that. But you know what they said to me? This is what they said to me. They said, now remind people. Uh, we lost everything. All we had was what we given to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> they said all we had left was what we gave to the Lord. Tell other people about that. That's all we had left. Listen, folks. All one day, all we're going to have left is what we've done for the Lord. Amen. Only what we've done for Christ. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. We know that. So uh, we're to be laying up treasure in heaven. The Bible tells us. Lay up treasure in heaven. Why? First of all, Christ has given us a warning against laying up earthly treasures. Secondly, Christ is, tells us the folly of laying up earthly treasures. And then thirdly, because there's a danger of laying up earthly treasures. In verses 21 through 23, look at these last few verses here in Matthew chapter 6. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Jesus said it's dangerous just to lay treasures up on this earth. There is a danger, number one. Look at verse 21. There's a danger that we'll set our hearts upon the things of this world rather than upon God. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Wherever you put your treasure, listen, wherever you put your treasure... Your time, your talents, your, uh, your resources, wherever you put those, that's where your heart's going to be. Where's your heart at? When you put your, uh, your treasures, your time, your talents, your, uh, your resources into the things of this world, then that's where your heart's going to be. Wherever your uh, talents are, my friend, wherever your treasures are, those things, that's where your heart is going to be. There's a danger that uh, we'll put our hearts upon those things rather than upon God. A lot of people... Uh, their heart is no longer upon God because it's on the things of this world. Number two, there's a danger that uh, we will permit them to fill our souls with darkness rather than light. Look at verses 22 and 23. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? If... Our eyes are only fixed upon the things of this world. This world is a world of darkness, isn't it? My friend, what's your soul going to be filled with? Darkness, isn't it? If you only are focused upon the things of this world, if your eyes are only upon the things of this world, get hold of this, only upon the things of this world, my friend, this world is filled with darkness, and my friend, your soul, he says here, will be filled with darkness. But if you shut, put your eyes upon 
the things of God, my friend, on the light, then your soul will be filled with light. That's what he's talking about here in these verses. So there's a danger. There's a danger uh, that it will permit our souls to be filled with darkness rather than light. And then thirdly, there's a danger that we'll serve uh, these things in this world rather than serve God. Look at verse number 24. Here's a verse that we all know. Look what it says. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. What is mammon? Mammon is money. You can't serve both God and money. You can serve one, but you can't serve the other. A lot of people say, I'm going to serve both of those. You can't do it. He said, you're going to love one and you're going to hate the other. My friend, you're going to uh, either you're going to serve God and, uh, or you're going to serve money. That's it. That's what he says here in this passage. Now, you say, well, can we have a finance? Yeah, God, God's going to provide those for us. And God wants us to have those. Matthew 6, 33. To seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. The Bible says we'll put him first. He's going to bless us and give us those things he wants us to have. And man, I, I would pray that God would make every one of you wealthy. Amen. I would pray that. But maybe that's not God's will. But if we are willing to let God work in our lives, we're willing to serve him, then my friend... Uh, then I, he may bless you in that way. Where's your heart at? Where's your, uh, uh, what are you investing in? What, uh, where's your mind fixed? What do you love? There is a story about a fellow by the name of Richard D. Armour. That name might not, uh, might not uh, strike a chord with you, but if I, when I begin to talk about him, then you'll understand who he is. In 1893... Richard D. Armour. 1893, understand this. Richard D. Armour had, uh, uh, he had $50 million here in America. $50 million. Armour. This guy had a meat packing plant. Does that tell you who he is? Armour. We know that name. We know it. Vienna sausages, you know, Armour. And uh, potted meat, different things like that. Well, he had a meatpacking plant, and he was a multimillionaire, $50 million. Do you know what? He had, way back then, he had 15,000 employees. 15,000. That's a lot of employees working for him in that meatpacking plant. This guy uh, was wealthy beyond measure. But you know, his schedule was very interesting. Every morning, he would get up at the same time. He would go to work and be at work at 5 o'clock in the morning. He would stay at work until 6 o'clock at night. He would go home. Then he would go to bed at 9 o'clock. And the next day he would start the same way. Every single day he did that. You think, here's a multimillionaire. Here's a guy that's got $50 million. Who knows how, how much that would be worth today. That would be worth a lot of money today. In fact, that company's worth a lot of money today. But you, you, you wonder... That guy, every single day, the same way, every single day, would do the same thing. Never take a break, never take a vacation. He did the same thing. They did an article on him, and they said, uh, uh, do you love money? You know what he said? He said, I don't love money. They said, you don't love money? He said, no, I don't love money. Oh, you go to work. You got all this money. You mean you don't love money? He said, no, I don't love money. You know what he said? He said, I love making money. He didn't love money. But he loved making money. That was his love. Whatever you love, my friend, what is it that you love? What do you love? My friend, that's what you'll do. That's where your heart will be. We serve what we love. We need to serve the Lord. We need to trust in God. Do you know that in God we trust was put, the first coin it was put on was a two-cent piece. It was during the, uh, the presidency of Abraham Lincoln. There was a man in Abraham Lincoln's cabinet. He was a... Uh, Secretary of Finance and he, he was a Christian by the name of Chase and he went to Abraham Lincoln one day and he said you know what he said if America is going to be a success then we need to trust in God he said we need to put in God we trust on our money rather than people trust their money we need to put in God we trust on our money so they and Abraham Lincoln said okay and so they put in God we trust on a two cent piece listen we need to trust in God. Amen? Who do you trust in? Someone said uh, that some people say in gods we trust because they're trusting in the gods of this world. We need to trust in God. We need to have faith in God. Listen, folks, uh, 
We need to lay up treasures in heaven because Christ has given us a warning. He says the folly of laying up earthly treasures and then he talks about the danger of laying up earthly treasures. We need to be laying up treasures in heaven. Let's bow our heads. Every head bowed, every eye closed here today. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. We need to be laying up treasures in heaven. Let me ask you this, a couple of questions. Number one, where are you laying up your treasures? Would you say, you know what? I need to be laying up treasures in heaven. I need to be looking past this life and looking to eternity, looking to heaven. I need to be laying up treasures in heaven. And you know, God has spoken in my heart about laying up treasures in heaven. Just instead of just laying up treasures on this earth, I need to be laying up treasures in heaven. God has spoken in my heart about that. Would you pray for me that I would uh, commit my life to laying up treasures, giving my time, giving my talents, giving my, uh, my uh, resources to the Lord, that I would look forward to heaven, look past this life, look forward to eternity. And uh, would you pray for me that I would be laying up treasures in heaven? Would you slip your hand up all through the building? Pray for me. I need to be laying up treasures in heaven rather than just here upon this earth. I need to be laying up treasures in heaven. Thank you very much. We need to be praying that the people in this church would be laying up treasures and giving our time, giving our talents, giving our treasures to the Lord. But you know what? It wouldn't do you any good to try to lay up treasures in heaven if you're not saved. You can't lay up treasures in heaven if you're not saved. You've got to be saved first. Today, do you know that you're saved? Today, do you know that you're on your way to heaven? Or would you say, you know what? I'm not sure that I'm saved. I'm not sure that I'm on my way to heaven. And you know what? I would like to be sure that I'm saved and on my way to heaven. So I can lay treasures up in heaven. Would you pray for me today? Slip your hand up, put it back down. Say, I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure I'm on my way to heaven. But I want to lay up treasures in heaven by being saved, first of all. Dear Lord, I pray that you would be with this invitation time today. You've spoken to hearts here today. Dear Lord, I pray that you would move in each one of our hearts. May we lay up treasures in heaven rather than just upon this earth. Sometimes we get carried away with this life. It becomes so wearisome and so bothersome. Father, just the struggle of daily life that we forget that we're supposed to be laying up treasures in heaven. May we commit ourselves to giving our time, giving our talents, and giving our uh, resources unto you, dear Lord, that, uh, that we might be laying up treasures in heaven. Father, we, look, we would look forward to heaven. We would look forward to eternity. Father, I pray that you would help us, uh, Father, to see uh, what uh, you have for us and to see concerning missions, dear Lord. Help us to have a mindset that we would uh, like to see more people come to know Christ as their Savior. Now bless this invitation time, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet. God spoke into your heart. If you'll come and pray here at the altar today, then I know that God will bless. Why don't you come as we begin to sing?